If you love curbing enthusiasm, and let's be honest, that's a rhetorical thought. Who does not? Then you are going to love the Book of Leon, Philosophy, <laughs> philosophy of a Fool, written by Leon Black himself and the man who plays Leon Black in every single glorious episode that he is on in Curb Your Enthusiasm, a man who I'm thrilled to be called a friend and a friend of this program uh, for years, has been our Super Bowl correspondent uh, on behalf of the Rich Eisen Show, and I'm pleased to say we'll be once again for Super Bowl 52 upcoming in Minnesota. Yes, indeed. J.B. Smooth, good to see you, sir. Well, Tom's a Tom, and we already talked about this now. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it should be called Foreplay. Okay. Foreplay will be a great name for it. Yes. Fourth Tom. Uh, media uh, correspondent for the Richard Eisen show. Come now, would you now. Still, you'd still spell it the 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 number four, right? Or would it, would it be an actual number? How no, would no, you, you spell it, it wrong. You, sp you spell it wrong. Mm -hmm. So we spell something wrong, it makes people look at it more. You spell it with a P. Four. <laughs> four play. P H O two P's. Two P's. We could do it. We could four play. It's the Super Bowl. It could be spelled in Roman numerals, but that would be I V play. That'd be, uh, that, see, it won't work. You yeah. got you, you got to spell four with a P. Four play. Mm -hmm. Oh, see that? So I just did. I'm always thinking of stuff like that. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Be oh. Before we get into uh, <sighs> uh, some good uh, uh, conversation on Curb and your book and everything mm. else, could not help but notice you were at Game 7 of the World Series. You caught that. You brought out the ceremonial first ball as with Manny Mota. That's right. And a member of the Boys and Girls Club Society here in Los Angeles as a <gasps> Introduced to the crowd as a Hall of Fame member of the Boys and Girls Club. I'm a Club. Hall of Fame member of the Boys and Girls Club. I actually went in uh, two years ago. They had the ceremony in New Orleans mm -hmm. amongst, amongst some other alum. Uh, we all went in at the same time, and um, they, they, they have it every year. Uh, I think this year it's going to be in um, San Diego. Okay. But uh, we had it in New Orleans, man, my favorite city, and um, next to New York City. But uh, it's fabulous, man. We, uh, we walked that first pitch out. My guy, Nate. What up, Nate? Little Nate, man. Yeah. Did a great job. He was all nervous, but he, he held that ball. I said, don't drop that damn ball, boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of people watching this right now. You hold that ball. We got out there, man. He burned the first pitch out, man. And ironically, last night, I um, just had one of our galas last night. Mm -hmm. I actually ran from doing another interview, and I ran straight over to host the gala last night at the Beverly Hilton mm -hmm. uh, Hotel. And um, always fabulous, man. My second time doing that. And um, they love it when I pop in, man. I give back constantly. And... Um, Good a lot of fun you. last night, man. Drop and a that, great, great moment. Drop that ball right on, right How on the pitch. How great was that man. for him, man? So did you stick the whole game? Did you stick the whole game? I stayed though? to the sixth because I, you know, you know, people, 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 uh, folks. I love the fans, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I got to go home at some point. And it, you know, <laughs> and you try, you can't. I, I repeat, I don't know if you had the same problem, but you cannot leave the game with everybody else. You know, you love, you love your fans, you love the people. But you cannot leave with everybody else because oh, everybody, everybody, you know, I treat everybody the same, mm -hmm. and but I can't treat everybody the same all night. You know, it's to the point where you got you got to go home at some point. So it's not beating the traffic. It's it's, the, it's, the, it's too much. It's too much. It's beating JB the people. Smooth. You beat the people. <laughs> <laughs> Most people beat the traffic. You gotta beat the people out of there, man. Woo! You ever get stuck in the bathroom in front of a urinal in front of somebody? <laughs> and somebody's talking to you the whole time about curb? I'm like, yo, man, I'm, I'm, I'm peeing right now. We can talk about curb when we get, out, when we get outside. One guy wanted to take a photo in front of the urinal. I said, no, man, you don't want to ever take a, a selfie with the urinal behind you. You don't do that. That's not what you do. You get outside. When we get outside, yeah. take a good photo. Yeah. You don't want the urinals behind you. You, you don't want that. Well... I mean, there's a, there's a certain way of going about your business. There's a certain way of doing it. Some people don't have that uh, bathroom mm -hmm. etiquette. They don't have that. They don't right. have it, the bathroom etiquette down. Now, are you a Dodger fan, JB? Are you? Sadly, I am not a Dodger fan, mm -hmm. but I, I I am a baseball fan. I'm a Yankee baby. Come on now. All we right. came close. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I went out there uh, to support the, the Dodgers in the, in the city that I, I earn money in, sure. and, and okay. great fans out here. So you and LD are, are Yankee fans? You and LD? LD is a big Yankee LD. fan. LD, we, 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 we share a lot. We, we're both Yankee fans. We're both suffering Jet fans, you know, although I, I am also a big-time Saint fan since I was a kid. Okay. Um, but um, we, we both talk about the Jets all the time, you know. I'm, 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 I'm kind of torn between what's happening now with the Jets. Do, should we be at 500? You know, uh, I'm, I'm I'm almost like ah, I'm scared. What we, you know, I'm more scared of what we're not gonna get after the season as opposed to what we're gonna get. You know, we barely slide into the playoffs. That'll be weird for me because I really I didn't want us to tank, but I wanted us to get some good picks and, and yes. start to play some of those guys on the bench. See what we have right now. We're putting a lot into this journeyman, and I feel like we're not seeing what we ha we don't know what we got in stock. You know what I mean? You know how you go to Costco, you be like, hey man, uh, y'all ran out of the. Uh, <laughs> The, the Kirkland underwear, you know. 
You know, okay, everything's by Kirkland. And the, the Kirkland underwear, the, the size large is gone. And he goes, let me check my inventory and see how I got some more in the back. That's what it feels like the Jets are doing here. We don't know what the hell we got in inventory right now. So just to follow, uh, Josh right. McCown is the Kirkland underwear? No, you, no. Oh, no. You're looking for. I'm oh, trying to find Sam Darnold. I'm trying to find. Sam Darnold is the Kirkland. Yeah, underwear. I want to know what we got in stock. Josh I want to know what we got. The Kirkland. I want to know. I want to know when I ask you about it, and you and you walk to the back and say, "I'll be right back. Let me go check." You know, but sometimes in the back, sometimes, but most of the time it's stacked up top. The guy got to look back and see what's on top because all the right. Costco stuff is stacked up top. Bit. So Bryce Petty is the boxer, mm. and Hackenberg is the brief. <laughs> no, sometimes, no, no, no. Sometimes they don't have the tank tops either. Sometimes those tank tops don't, they don't have those tank tops. Oh, you it's funny because Larry was he when he was here a couple weeks ago. It's just like <laughs> this does nothing. You know what I mean? The, it, the, the winning just enough does nothing. It does nothing to, for us. To to because you're not seeing what you currently have at the quarterback no, no, we, spot. We don't have a guy to and you're not losing enough to actually go get the top potential guy. We don't know what the hell we got. We don't know what we got right now. We need we need we need to see what we have. We need to assess the value, what we have right now. Yeah. We keep going out there winning games or, or, or damn or damn near barely losing. Yeah. It's like, uh, do we have more than we think we have? But that's that's false. That's a false truth for us because what's gonna happen is yeah. we're gonna next year we're gonna be zero and sixteen. <laughs> I'm telling you what happens. <laughs> it's a it's a no, fluke. Come on now. I'm telling you. That would be the that would be the most jet-like What's happening thing around. is, this is what happened in the NFL to me. Yes. Uh, we, we, everybody's starting to be like this. It's sometimes good for, for football. Mm -hmm. I just see like, one team dominate every, completely dominate every year. Yeah. Right now, it's kind of getting mixed up a little bit. You know, you really, right now, you could not tell me right now who you think is going to go to the the big game this That's year. That's correct. You, you can't, no more, I don't think anybody be, can. Who would you just, uh, before we take our break, just for comedy uh, purposes, interview purposes, which AFC and NFC team would you want to be there so you could have them in your JB Smooth sites? Oh, some good questions. For questions oh, at the Super Bowl. Oh, God. Who a who? I would, like, I would love to see it. somebody who hasn't been there in a while. Okay, so the Patriots are out. The Patriots are out. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of Tom Brady questions. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> running out of Tom Brady questions. But Belichick likes he, Curb, though, right? But Belichick, he, just came, he just came around last year. Now, the, the year before, yeah. I think mean, he got a little irritated with me the year before. So... <laughs> So this year, I think he yeah. kind of he mellowed out. This year, yeah. I, I softened him up with a little cookie question, and I got him. I got him going with the cookie. The cookie question. Yeah, you asked him what type of cookie, cookie he was, likes. He's a tough cookie. What was, kind of cookie would you be? Vanilla wafer. Did he, he, had, <laughs> he said chocolate chip. I thought the man would say fig Newton because the fig Newton is an old ass cookie. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> But he, he turned around and said, Chuck and Chip. I said, really? You and Chuck? I just figured the man would say Fig Newton. You know what I mean? So you've already used some top-notch material. Not, you not can't that, not, that, not that we can't make new ones up. I'm right. just telling you that uh, I think that uh, I don't think they're going to go this year anyway. Steelers? Would you want Tomlin? I don't think they're going to make it either. I don't think they're going to make it. I'm just, there's comedy purposes, and then yeah. there's who I think might go. Chiefs, I want, I want comedy purposes. I think, I don't think it's, I, I think it's going to be some – I think someone's going to upset somebody. Who I, who I think would be good – Raiders, Chiefs, Andy Reid. Raiders ain't gonna make it either, man. Andy Reid. I think I I I thought I had it figured out, and then yeah. all these damn injuries happened, so it kind of ruined that. Mm -hmm. um, you no, know I think it would be interesting. I think I think it would be interesting to see um, uh, KC make it. Okay. And it it will be it will be it will be really cool. Of course, I would love my Saints to go again. You know, the Jets ain't gonna make it this year. That would be awesome too, but that, I don't think it's gonna happen because we still Saints uh, might. Saints might might. Saints might make it. You know I mean? um, but you know what? If the Saints don't make it, you know what? I got a lot of friends who are Cowboys. Just for the questions alone, <laughs> I think we'll have a great time with the Cowboys. You and Jerry Jones mm. would mm -hmm. be an outstanding interview. If I, think. I can get Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know my, my 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 real first name is Jerry too. I didn't that, that's the what J the J stands the for? Jerry's always have a good convo. <laughs> First time I met Jerry Seinfeld, we had a good Jerry conversation. The Jerry's kind of stick together. The Jerry's. We call ourselves the Jerry's. We put a little quote, the Jerry's. So uh, that'll be a fun a fun talk because it'll give us something different. Uh, two new teams yeah. that we never met before, and we could talk about it. What J.J. Smooth on? and J.B. Smooth. Oh, that'd be great, J man. It would be J.J. Smooth. Talk to Dak, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Elliot, <laughs> Dak, all those guys, man. Good. I mean, okay. I, can, I can get some good questions. I think we I think we have a lot of fun. Okay. But it also would be fun to see, you know. Your Saints, maybe you could see that? Saints, oh, come yeah. on now. Okay. If, you know, um, when the Saints went the first time, you know, I was the only Saint fan in the in my house. I had a big party, mm -hmm. Super Bowl party, and everybody was Colt fans. 
You know, oh, I was yeah. I was in there fully dressed in full <laughs> New Orleans Mardi Gras outfit. Had to had to uh, <laughs> had a little jacket on. Yeah. Had a trumpet. Yeah. I had beads around my neck, man. I made pole boys. I, I mean, I had it. I had it tricked out, man. I had girls flashing. It was crazy, man. <laughs> you know how they flash on top of those? <laughs> the beads are being overflowed. Yeah. The book and everything. Of, it was loaded. My whole house was tricked out, man. The Book of Leon so philosophy, the fool, uh, with Leon Black, uh, oh. man himself, J.B. Smooth is here. When we come back, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about Curb, this book. And mm. then we asked Larry David to be judge and jury on certain social situations when he was here oh, last time. I want you to, I'm going to ask you the same questions and see. Let's see how we, how, how it, how it bounces see, out. See how you, how you mix it up. That's yeah. Whatever. Okay. Let's do it. That's coming up. 60 seconds with J.B. <laughs> Smooth here on The Rich Eisen Show. Welcome back to The Rich Eisen Show. J.B. Smooth is here uh, in studio. I don't know if you're aware of this, but when Adrian Peterson was acquired by the Arizona Cardinals, mm -hmm. he uh, didn't have a place to, to live right away. Larry Fitzgerald has put him in his guest house. I'll tell you something. What does I've that sound all, like to you? I've always said that. Mm -hmm. I've always said that Adrian Peterson was the Leon of the <laughs> National Football League. <laughs> no, I never said that. But uh, that's what Did friends you know do. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That's what friends do. So when I see, because we're going there uh, tomorrow, because it's the Arizona Cardinals mm -hmm. and the Seahawks from the, on the NFL Network and NBC, I'm going to ask Adrian Peterson if, he, if he's lamping. You got to ask him. Know what you should do? Should this is a great idea. Now, I'm going to tell you, man, Larry Fitzgerald is one of the best people in the world. True story. Not, I, I mean, true story. Yeah. Uh, whether he's a football player or not, man. Yeah. He's a, he is a great guy, man. We we became friends. Nice guy. Once in a while, I'll send him a text message, great game or mm -hmm. whatever. He's a great guy. You guys should go over there. You should go over there, right? <laughs> Do the same scene. You know, hold that, that whole back shot of Larry walking over to that guest house, <laughs> knock on that door, have Adrian Peterson open that damn door. <laughs> I said, what you doing? I had that dude say, oh, I'm just chilling. I'm just laughing. I'm laughing. I'm chilling. So instead of LD, it's, it's LF uh, and, and AD smooth. You know how awesome that would that. be, man? Oh, We should do that. But that's what friends would do, man. So I would do that. I got, I got a little guest house yeah? in my backyard. Yeah. Do you, do you have anybody lamping in there? Not right now. Not, not currently, but people have. Where did you come up with lamping? lamping in. Where did you come up? Was that off the top of your head? No. Lamping is actually an old phrase from the late 80s, man. They say, um, <laughs> I learned this from my good friend um, uh, uh, Quest Love. Okay. Quest Love of the Roots. He told me that the original, you know, because Public Enemy had a song called Cold Lamping, mm -hmm. Flavor Flav. And what that was is he would lean against a light post and, and, and just chill out. You know, from what I heard, with his coat over his shoulder, lamping. lamping. That's called lamping. I but see. over the years, you know, it has progressed <laughs> and it has evolved into, and like someone will say, what you doing, man? This lamping. And, and it could be, it's this, it's whatever you whatever, whatever you, you wanted it to be. Could we be? Chilling, I mean, chilling could easily have been people in the North Pole somewhere on Alaska sitting outside, they lost their apartment because they didn't pay their damn rent. That could have been chilling. Right? And what are you doing in up <laughs> what are you doing in Alaska? When it's yeah. cold, you chill. You chilling. You over chilling, damn near. You're gonna get exposure to the to the elements. <laughs> you're gonna be end up in the hospital because you got pneumonia. See? <laughs> See, if I overthink it, it could be anything I want it to be. Are we technically lamping right now? This is lamping right here. We're lamping right now. You know, of course we're working, but it's lamping. Yeah. Lamping is whatever you want it to be. It could be anything you want it to be. <laughs> as long as you are relaxed state of mind yeah. and you and you you cool. Okay. You cool with what's going on right now. Now, when you were here last time in studio, mm -hmm. you gave us the hint that Larry called you up to see if you were interested in doing this again. You know what, man? I went a whole lot of flack from that, man. Did you really? Before Curb came out, everybody they labeled me uh uh the 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 dude who spills the beans all the time, the spoiler, all these <laughs> all these words they use for people who's you know what? I told Larry this was gonna happen. Number one, Larry doesn't do a lot of press. Mm -hmm. I do a, I do press so damn much, man. Between my stand-up shows, doing press, <laughs> this uh, book, all, the book, doing press, my my Crown Royal campaign, doing press, all these different things, doing press for. And you, I told these guys they're gonna ask me about Curb. Mm -hmm. There's no, as soon or later, something's gonna slip out, or I'm gonna elaborate to the point where they're gonna take what I said. They're gonna find little tidbits and say, you know what? <laughs> in, in, a, in a roundabout way, JB Smooth said the show's coming back. So now everybody, well, I, now it's kind of embarrassing now when I come around, yeah. everybody shuts up. 
like they don't want to say anything <laughs> around me. I know what the hell you're doing, Larry. I know what the hell y'all doing on the set. I see what you're doing, Jeff Garland. Right. I see you, Susie. Y'all trying to be quiet. Cheryl, I see. Funkhauser, uh, I see what's going on. You all trying to be quiet when I come around now because y'all want me to know if something's going to happen again. You know what I mean? Well, but, but I don't know. But I did tell Larry. <laughs> I will tell you this much. I did tell Larry this, though. Yes. That's when I first met Larry. I said, this show is like a boxer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you got talent, people want to see your talents. So don't retire too early. Right? Mm -hmm. But somehow those talents will erode. You got to decide when you're going to end. So you got to you gotta be smart about when, how long this show going to go. And I also told Larry to make sure the show, whatever your box set is, it's got to look good on the shelf. Because <laughs> nothing worse than seeing an odd number box, a box set with a weird number. Like, yeah. mm, that's a dumb ass number. He stopped that. Well, you got to make it look good. It got to be concise and it got to be perfect. Your box set should be beautiful sitting on the shelf. People love to see a good looking box set of Kirby enthusiasm. So I told Larry, make, make your mind up when you're gonna when you're gonna end it. And so pick now, a good number. He, he, didn't me, he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. number. Well, he when he was here a couple weeks ago, he's like he's thinking about it. Whatever that's his whatever his number is. But he's but, but that's how it starts. He's got to think about thinking about it. I think well, see me. I'm, I love I love seven. Hell, my okay. wife and I got married seven seven oh seven. So sevens is my thing. Okay. See, so everything I do is in sevens. Mm -hmm. You know, I do everything in sevens. Um, so here's a book again, uh, the book of Leon Philosophy of a Fool uh, by Leon Black. I asked Larry David when he was here three questions about being judge and jury. Ooh. I want to see if if your answers match Larry's. Man, based bring on, it. Bring it. Again, here is social <clears throat> situation. Bring social it. situation number one: destination weddings. Oh, man. People love destination weddings. Correct. Now, if you go to a destination wedding, uh -huh. J.B. Smoove, are you required to get a present for the bride and groom? Is your presence, your present, going to a destination wedding? Mm. You got to get a present no matter what you do. Right? Really? You okay. bring a present to a destination wedding. See, first of all, a destination wedding allows you to change your mind also. You know what happens at this weddings? People get amnesia. They lose their mind. Their marbles. If a guy <laughs> want to back out or a lady want to back out and disappear, she can say, "I lost my, I just, I lost my memory, and I, and I wandered away onto the beach, <laughs> onto a, a nude beach, and and that's where they found me at. I'm so sorry, this ain't gonna work out. See, see, destination wedding allows you to get away from it all. So, if you have one here in the states, it won't work because people say, uh, you know. You 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 ran out on your husband or your bride to be. Or Didn't whatever. that happen to you, Chris? Once at a destination wedding? It did. <laughs> like I said, yeah. I, I don't lie, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. Now yeah. the best place you... to disappear is on a destination wedding. So are you saying you change that? your mind? Yeah. So are you saying that if you accept to go to a destination wedding, it's on you? Let me tell you something. You go to a you go to the Caribbean. Yeah. You asking for it. You know who takes your women? I tell you, who take a lady from you? Those stilt dancers. Those dudes that be dancing like those dudes on the stilts. <laughs> Ladies love these guys right here. Those stilt dancers. They always be dancing. People, when ladies see those stilt dancers, yeah. you gotta watch out. Because those stilt dancing dudes will take your lady. I cover it in the book. It's in the book. They will take your lady. Okay? See, now that you go, was... into your, you go into your room, you wonder what the hell's going on here. The bed is all disheveled. You know, you see handprints <laughs> on the ceiling. You know why? Because that dude, he tall. His hands on the ceiling, making love to your lady. See? You know, and, and they never pull the stilts off. They always keep the stilts on when they're making love to your lady. So you be careful with these destination weddings because those still dancers will take your lady. See, that difference, the, the J.B. Smoove answer was different from the Larry David answer. That was very, right? very different. different. <laughs> Larry basically said. It's in the book, though. He it's said, in the book. don't even go. It's in the book. It says, watch out. Watch out for those stilt dancers in the Caribbean. In the, any island. Jamaica, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Bart's, St. Bart's, any one of them. Uh, all right, I got you two watch more. Watch out. I got those <laughs> guys are crap. They're sneaky. I got two more quick no, ones for you. say about long legs. Here's two more quick ones for no. you. Uh, if you're going to a fight night, all right, mm -hmm. you're going to the, uh, the McGregor Mayweather fight. You're going to somebody's house, mm -hmm. and you bring desserts, mm -hmm. okay, and you put the desserts out on the table. Mm -hmm. Nobody eats the desserts. Mm -hmm. When you leave, can you take the desserts back? Of course you take the desserts back. <laughs> you don't leave them there. If, they, if they're going to go to waste, you sell these going to go to waste. Is anybody going to eat these? If nobody's going to eat these, what, what I, here's, here's what I normally do. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I normally do. I take them, but I don't take them home. What I do is this. I hide them around the house <laughs> like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> right? I take the tray. I say, excuse me one minute. And I go walk around the house. Yeah. I'll put one here. Put one under the bed. I just put them everywhere. I put some in the bathroom. 
but in weird places. <laughs> you, know, you only find them when you're cleaning up. You never find, they, they're not out in the open. Like yeah. if you put your, your broom or your vacuum under the mm. bed, it'll come back out with, what, what the hell is that? You know what I mean? And nothing worse than a cupcake getting wrapped up in a vacuum cleaner. It's the most amazing thing ever. You know how hard it is to get uh, frosting and cupcake out of a vacuum cleaner? Oh, man, it drives them crazy. <laughs> so that just shows them when I bring something over mm. your house, you eat it. Or I'm going to hide it around your house like an Easter egg hunt. That is... And they'll pop up months later sometimes. Fantastic. Sometimes a week later. <laughs> but eventually, it might pop up next time I come over to see a game. And the last one for you is, what are your thoughts on people who take their shoes off on a plane? Mm, you have a problem mm, with mm. that? Let me tell you something. The first thing I do is put my shoes off. Right? I've been walking around all day. My socks are clean. My shoes been worn. I went to the airport. My feet are tired. I've been waiting around to get on this plane. You know, you might not be in priority. Maybe you in coach. You got to wait longer to get on. You know, you always, I slide them boots off. These boots come off. Hell, I'll put my boots off right now if you, if I feel inclined to it. You understand? Is you that pull laughing? your boots off. You pull your shoes off and you relax. Now, I recommend this more for people in first class because in first class, you should be able to do what the hell you want to do without <laughs> anybody saying anything. Now, if your ass in coach... Keep your damn shoes on. Yeah. You, don't deserve, you don't deserve to have your shoes off. Your ass and coach. Yeah. You keep your, you keep your feet on. Keep your shoes on. Because I don't want you sitting there trying to get your shoe back on and trying to go to the bathroom. That's the worst thing when the middle dude is trying to put his goofy ass shoes back on <laughs> and he got to go to the bathroom. It, yes. it, it irritates me. You shouldn't even have your shoes off. You and coach. Sit there and shut up. Hold your pee. Yeah. The, right? the book of Leon, Philosophy of a Fool. Hey, man, by this Leon book is, Black. I'm telling you, hey. Have you read the book yet? Oh. Yes. Well, I'm taking it also to Arizona on my flight to Take Arizona. Take it to Arizona, man. Uh, spread it around, man. When you okay. go to that guest house yes. and you go see Adrian Peterson at that yes. guest house, yes. give me a little book, man. I got it. Good. This is this is, this is is knowledge. I'm telling y'all, man. It's a fun book, man. Had a great time writing it, man. Beautiful. And, uh, coincides with the amazing new season of Kirby Enthusiasm. The it's, book it's, of Perfect. Good to see you, bud. Perfect. Hey, you man, it. I love you. At O Snap JB Smooth At on Twitter. O Snap JB Smooth. Woo. Good to see you, JB. Hey, man, I like those questions too, man. I'm yeah. going to call Larry about that. Good. Well, we'll be back with more in a moment. For more Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Rich Eisen Show app.